Do you have dry skin? Do your eyes itch? Have back pain? Constipation? Can't stop sh Can't get it up? Gnarly toe fungus? Premature? You know, hair where you don't want it? No hair where you do want it? Zits? Boils? Wrinkles? Digestive issues? Has your head come off? Well, you're gonna need some drugs. Side effects of this video may include an awareness of factual truths, frustration at the curse status quo of the medical field, increased brain activity, confidence in choosing your own medical treatment, the uncontrollable need to hit the thumbs up or down button, peace of mind knowing what you are ingesting, and anal linkage. Hi, it's Emily from Bite Size Vegan, and welcome to another vegan nugget. Today we're going to talk about medication. I get this question all the time. Is any medication vegan? And if not, what's a vegan to do when serious medical conditions arise? Well first, let's tackle whether or not medication is vegan. I'm not going to go into great depth on subjects that I've already covered in other videos, and I'll provide the links to all of them in the video description below, as well as on screen during the video for those of you on your computer who can click them on them. So what makes medication not vegan? Well, there are two main elements one more direct and one more indirect. The direct reason is when animal products are within the medication itself, and the more indirect reason is the fact that the medication was tested on animals. So, just what kinds of animal parts are in your medicine cabinet? Well, there's a surprising array of potential options. But let's focus on some of the more common ingredients. Number one, gelatin. This is perhaps the ingredient that most people are familiar with when it comes to medication. Gelatin is most often used as the coating surrounding the medication itself. And it's not just the capsules that you can pull apart. Gelatin can also be an ingredient on tablets. In case you're not aware of what gelatin is and how it's made, it's pretty gross. In short, gelatin is a protein obtained by boiling the skin, tendons, ligaments, and or bones of animals with water at an aromatic facility called a rendering plant. Rendering plants are magical places where the leftovers and rejects of the meat industry, as well as roadkill and diseased animals, go to be boiled in water and have elements sucked out like gelatin, which is then put into your pudding, jello, pet food, shampoos, face masks, cosmetics, candies, marshmallows, cakes, ice creams, yogurts, some wines, photographic film, and yes, vitamins and medications. Now, there is such a thing as vegetable gelatin, called agar agar, which is seaweed derived. Unfortunately, it's often marked in ingredient lists as simply gelatin, making it difficult to ascertain the true source. You can always call a product's 800 number and inquire to be sure. Number two, lactose. This is probably the most common animal ingredient in medications. It's used as a carrier, stabilizer, or to create bulk. Lactose, obviously, comes from dairy and is thus not vegan. Many medications from thyroid medicine to birth control pills contain lactose. I have a whole video on the veganness of various birth control methods here that you can reference for more in-depth coverage of that particular subject. Number three, shellac. Shellac is a resin secreted by the female lac bug. It has many uses, from sealing wood, to making your nails look super pretty, to coating your fruit. Yes, sorry vegans. Even your fruit may have animals in it. To making your pills shiny. Number four, magnesium stearate. Magnesium stearate can be used as a preservative, a lubricant, or to help two ingredients mix that normally don't blend well. Like gelatin, magnesium stearate can come from either an animal or plant source, but it's not often notated. When animal derived, it is an ester of magnesium and stearic acid, which is sourced from the fat of cows, pigs, sheep, dogs, or cats. Number five, lots of other stuff. The list of weird animal ingredients in medication and food and really anything that we make is mind-boggling. I really wonder why they do it at all. There's everything from your pink and red pills and food getting their distinct colors from ground-up pregnant beetles called cochineal extract or carmine, long used in Starbucks strawberry frappuccino, to anticoagulants like heparin created from the intestinal mucosa membranes of pigs. For more on the insane and hidden ingredients in your food, see my oldie but goodie video on that matter. 
So that was just a super quick rundown of some of the animal products that might be in your medicine cabinet. Now let's move on to the reason that all prescription medications are, in essence, not vegan. Even when they don't contain a drop of animal derived ingredients. By law, at least in the United States, all medication and medical procedures must be tested on animals. I have an entire video series on the issue of medical testing in which I discuss whether it's effective and saves lives. Spoiler alert, it's not and it does not. Why it still continues after years of producing absolutely nothing viable. Spoiler alert, how it actually harms humans. Yes, it's not all about saving the animals. For some people. And the preponderance of viable and far more effective alternatives. Do check out those videos. They are a little bit before my video editing got better, but the information is still solid and it's a subject matter that's incredibly vital to be aware of in full. So. What's a vegan to do in a world where many medications have animals in them and all are tested on animals? Well, you may just think, I'll just go with non-prescription supplements. And in many cases, you might be onto something when it comes to plant-based herbal treatments. However, beware. For example, while prescription Synthroid, the most commonly used thyroid medication, contains lactose, Many natural supplemental thyroid treatments contain the actual desiccated thyroid and adrenal glands of cows and pigs. So, what if you're in grave need of medication? Say you have a debilitating genetic disease, or perhaps you have schizophrenia or severe depression. Are we to take up our mantle of martyrdom in the name of the animals? Where do we draw the line of ethics in our own health and safety? Well, I'll tell you where I stand on this. First, for preventable conditions, I say prevent them. The vast majority of medical care and medication in the US, if not the world, is for preventable diseases. Heart disease, diabetes, obesity. You won't have to take these prescriptions and treatments if you eat a healthy diet, exercise reasonably, reduce your stress levels, get enough sleep, etc. You can also look into alternative treatments, herbal remedies, or find a compounding pharmacy that can make your medications to your specifications so as to avoid gelatin capsules and other ingredients. But what if you've already done all of this? Or you have a genetic condition completely separate from your lifestyle, which requires medication. Or you have a severe mental illness that is resistant to anything but prescription medication. Here is where I think the as far as practical and possible element of veganism comes in. I have a whole video with Gary Yarofsky about being 100% vegan, so be sure to check that out as well. Here's how I see it. If you're bedridden or in constant pain or crippled by your own mind, you can't really be of service to the animals, can you? I like to make the analogy of a plane going down. What do they tell you to do when the oxygen masks come out? Put on your own before helping others. You can't be a voice for the animals and fight for their liberation if you aren't well yourself. And the only way that we're gonna get animals out of our medication and out of our research is by fighting. I've said it before, but when we are no longer slaughtering 150 billion sentient beings every year, we won't be so hard pressed to find new and inventive, profitable ways to use their byproducts. We need to strike the animal products industry at its core. And by being vegan and abstaining from 99% of the problem and fighting against the rest, that is how we make a difference. Now this isn't an excuse to use animals guilt-free, but we have to look at reality as it is. If you truly cannot live or function without medication, take it. By all means, care for yourself so you can fight for them. It's an awful choice and the situation is deplorable, but I'd rather have you fighting alongside me than bedridden on principle. That's my take on the matter. In her article, Should Anti-Vivisectionists Boycott Animal Tested Medicines, Dr. Catherine Perlow examines the various arguments for and against refusing medical treatment that's been tested on animals. I highly recommend reading her article for a far more fleshed out take on this subject. I have a link to it and various other articles in the blog post linked in the video description. Dr. Perlow's conclusion is that we should promote a highly visible trend towards avoiding animal tested medications. Some people following the trend might reject the medicines altogether. Some might seek alternative treatment where available. 
Others might simply add a patient choice element to the other anti-vivisection demands. But the common goal would be to make the government, the medical profession, and the public aware that we do not want to take these medicines. And when we do, it is only through lack of choice. Luckily, we have some fantastic organizations like the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine and the Dr. Hadwin Trust of the UK fighting to develop non-animal methods and medications within the medical field. You can find links to their sites as well as a list of articles and resources, including a site where you can look up the ingredients of your own medications in the blog post for this video, which is linked in the video description below, along with all of the other videos that I mentioned. Now, I'd love to hear from you on this. What do you think about the issue of veganism and medication? What's your personal experience and stance? Let me know in the comments. If you find my educational videos valuable and you want to help keep them coming to reach more people with the message of veganism, please consider joining the Nugget Army on Patreon. You get perks and rewards for your support, and you get to join an awesome community of people. You can get more information by clicking that logo right there or the support link in the video description below. There's also a second support link there to make a one-time donation. No amount is too small. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up and do share it far and wide to spread the message. If you're new here, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button down there for more awesome vegan content every Monday, Wednesday, and most Fridays. I would love to have you as a subscriber. And while you're here, check out some of the related videos I have on this topic. They're also linked up below. Now go live vegan, and I'll see you soon. Man, I really hope that my videos don't actually cause anal leakage. I think I'd have like a class action lawsuit on my hands and a lot of pants to replace.